dear participants from iForce 2021 in Seoul this year. My name is Holger Schütt. I think I'm already introduced. And as you see, I'm not able to participate live, but I'm happy that I have at least the chance to talk to you with this video. After a short introduction, I will give you a short uh, yes, overview about container terminal simulation. We'll have a look at the digital twin for terminals. But they have to be based on industry standards and in my conclusions, I will give some remarks. So, first let's come to the introduction. As mentioned, I'm part of the Institute of Shipping Economics and Logistics. It's an applied research and consulting organization in the field of shipping economics. And the main thing we are doing is transfer between the science and the industry. And that's exactly what I'm talking about today. Some 10 years ago, we founded a subsidiary. This was or now named the Aquinet Port Consulting. And as you see, I'm the general manager over there and together with my colleague Norbert. With this company, we are providing port consultancy all over the world to ports. From the first idea, you see it on the left hand side, up to really optimizing the current operation. So a short overview about container terminal simulation will follow. And the first question, why to look at this branch? Here you see a statistic. It's from the isl.org and they are providing this statistics each month. It's showing what is happening worldwide with the container throughput. It shows the number of handled container in container terminals worldwide in the ports. And you see it's quite increasing all the time. We had this COVID down beginning of the 20s, but as you see, we are already quite well over the numbers before. Although we still have this COVID. And nowadays it's really, as you see down here, um, all over the world it's the same. The number, the transport is really increasing month by month. And have a look at it, end of August. These days, let's say, you will see the new statistics. www.isl.org It contains, by the way, um, the values of 91 international ports and these 91 ports are responsible for around 60% of the global container trade shipment. On the other side, also the vessel size is increasing all the time. So when I started my career in the ports, it was here, end of the 80s, beginning of the 19th and last century, the container vessels had about four to six thousand TEU. TEU means a 20 foot container equivalent. Nowadays, as you see at the lowest picture, it's about 25,000 TEU. So at least four times what we had 30 years before. And you may imagine that the container terminals have to cope with both parts that I showed you, with increasing volume and especially with the increasing vessel sizes. 
So how to handle this? How to guarantee a smooth operation? Already in the last century, in the 90s, simulation was used to look at the terminal planning and the terminal design, what we call the strategical planning. You see here some tools which were developed by the ISL and now distributed by the Aquinet. Now we are looking here at the terminal planning and design phase in the during the pre-planning and the planning phase. And one example just want to show you is a capacity tool which is looking at the container vessels arriving at a terminal being served by, by the key cranes you don't see any movement on the terminal because in this level we are only looking at the vessel size at the yard utilization and of course the hinterland connections so here we see uh, the planning was too optimistic and we have an overflow of these container type in our terminal so we have to change our plans what happens next post millennial came up uh, with a tactical planning which was looking at the terminal startup and the terminal operation already The main idea behind this was the technology which is called emulation instead of simulation. We call this the virtual terminal. And the, the main idea of this is to connect the simulation model with all movements with waiting times between or which are occurring during the handshake of different types of equipment and combine this simulation model with the real control system which you see here down yeah and you see each time the state is changing up here containers loading starts to dry this will change also in the control system so the intelligence is taken from the real control system and this means you do have a very detailed test bed of your control software with the means of emulation This is something we also did during several Ger Korean German research projects together with our partner. And this is why Hon Lee is my co author of this presentation. He's coming from Total Softbank Limited, placed in Busan in Korea. Also, the Busan National University and the University in Bremen, Germany, were participating in this project. On the one hand side, we coupled the CATOS, which is a terminal operating system from Total Softbank, we coupled it together with our simulation model, what you saw before, and therefore they have an integrated simulator in the CATOS. And together with the universities, we also developed and evaluated various rule-based yard and equipment strategies. And these are the first steps for preparing the digital twin. It's not really a digital twin, we will see later. So this was finished, successfully finished, last year in October. And the next step is now to use it as a digital twin for the terminals. Moment, moment.
So we had a look at the strategic planning for the layout and the design of a terminal, the tactical planning for the strategies to be used, and now we are going to the operational planning by forecasting the coming operation with simulation. First we have to define what is a digital twin. There are several definitions out in the world. I have taken out three here. The first one is a very low one. It's just a digital representation of a real world entity or system. I would say this is a simulation model. In my view this is not really a digital twin because I like the definition from Michael Greaves and John Vickers where they define a digital twin consists of three parts. First, you have the real terminal in our case. Second, we will have a virtual model of this. And the third part is very important from my side, from my view, you have a connection between these both so that all the time the virtual model of the terminal has the same state as the real terminal has. So what does it mean? You do have a TOS which is controlling the real product. But the next one is you have to connect the TOS to a model, like the model that we build within the simulation and the emulation world that I showed you before. So in having this, you have the same state on both sides all the time. And the main thing now is you're able to module to um, do fast simulations on this model to forecast the operation. So how does this look? Let's have a look at uh, terminal oh now it's moving. Let's have a look at a terminal in uh, Africa. It's a straddle carrier terminal. So this equipment you see uh, running around the terminal. These are called straddle carriers. They are able to pick up a container from the ground, transport them to wherever they want and uh, drop them down again. So you see here the key cranes working at the vessel and the transportation by the transport equipment. And the main thing here is this is run with real data. It's not a simulation with a defined scenario. It's a real data behind it. So perhaps you saw I clicked on a container. And now you see which container it is. All the parameters from this container. Look at another one. I click on the container and you see all parameters of this container will be shown or may be shown. So the model has the same state as the real world. But that's not all. We can also look at only at spe specific containers. So we see the vessel operation here on this berth. Where are the containers for this vessel? It's the voyage number DCT 2875. We select only these containers and you see, oh, here they are. All other containers are grayed out. And you see, good yard planning. Some of the containers, these are special containers, are far away, but most of them are near the bird. That's what you want to have. But next, we are not only looking at the containers. We may also look at the equipment. So let's have a look at the straddle carriers, for example. 
Here you see an overview of all, of all straddle carriers. We select the number 247, uh, 245, and you see this one with an arrow above it. We select it. And you see its productivity, the current state of, the contain, uh, of this equipment. And the same with the yard cranes. So now we select a yard crane over here. And we see this year the yard crane has a productivity of around 24 moves per hour or containers per hour at the moment. And of course, all other par uh, parameters or properties of the key crane and of all types of equipment can be seen. And based on this, you can do simulations into the future. That's the main idea of the digital twin, having a copy directly connected to the real world with all information that you need for your purposes. So a comparison between simulation, emulation and digital twin, three technologies. In the simulation, it's a black box where you have to define the scenario you have an internal toss decision system. The level of detail often is quite low to medium, but with a very high speed for strategic planning. Emulation is coupled to the toss. So you have, you're taking the scenario out of the toss. The decisions are made by the toss. Therefore, you have a very high level of detail but it's quite low because the speed is quite low because you have to connect uh, both systems. It's used for tactical planning, for uh, looking at the strategies on the terminal, optimize them. And then next one is the digital twin. The scenario is automatically updated by the TOS. The decisions are taken of course typically taken by the toss but if you want to have a forecast you again have an internal toss but with all planning parameters of the real toss the level of detail is again high not very high but high the speed is high because you're not connect during a simulation run with the real uh, terminal operating system. And this can be used for app operational planning, decisions which have to be done by the planner. So all this should be based on industry standards. What does it mean? If you want to build a digital twin, first you have to look at the layout. And we are part of the Port ML initiative which is uh, or started by the National University of Singapore. And the main idea is to have a standardized definition of layouts. On the other side, we are connected to the data lakes of, uh, in this case, APMT. Um, they are taking all information from there. Uh, terminals and put it into a big database and out of this we may define scenarios so the parameters that we need sizes of vessels and the, less, the next one is the live data and this is also standardized by TIC 4.0 so this is very important because having these standards allow you to things if you need. Applications may be calibrating the model by comparing the data, let's say productivity of a key crane, with the real. We act on exceptions, how to handle a crane breakdown and automatic check of the current plan. Will the vessel be served? Uh, Vessel serve uh, handling will be will it be finished in time? So conclusions: digital twins 
the container terminal should be built by using emulation models of this terminal, connected to the real terminal by listening to each state change, and use a pre preview module, a fast simulation, to look into the future. For this, you should use industry standards. And digital turbines combine the detailed behavior of the emulators, the current state of the terminal, and the fast simulation of the preview module. What happens next? We do have a current project together with our partner Total Softbank for a prototype for the digital twin for a Busan terminal installation in Hamburg with some topics and also together with the PDS supplier, hopefully also together with Total Softbank. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. My contact data is shown above here. You also may connect Hong Yi, our partner from Total Softbank. The email is shown here. Thank you very much for listening. Have a very good conference.